Hi everybody, Levi Clay here, and I'm back again to do another live transcribing video. This time I'm going to be transcribing something that I played. This is a video that I uploaded to Facebook a year or two ago, and it's just me outlining a 12-bar blues, a jazz blues. And it's really fitting because this month the transcription challenges on my Patreon page are uh, this, then there's some Kirk Fletcher, and there's some Josh Smith. So it's all about blues and playing over chord changes. I picked this one as a basic challenge because it's unaccompanied. There is no back, uh, backing for you to get lost in. You can really hear relatively clearly what the guitar is doing. So it should be easy, but it will present its own set of challenges. So why don't we take a look at it? I'll get transcribing and uh, yeah, see how we get on with it. Shouldn't be that difficult, right? I recorded it, therefore I should probably know how I played it. <laughs> Even though it's improvised, you know, I know my own play. Uh, let me move my face down here. So this is the video in question. Uh, if I just press play, so you can hear the file. Let me see what I've done with, uh, yeah, bypass that. We'll talk about that in a second. So yeah, this is just uh, an iPhone video. I just recorded this on my phone and, and flung it up on, it might have been Instagram, and then pulled over to Facebook. But it sounds like this. So reasonably in time, I've got a good strong 2-4 feel. Hopefully I'm in sync with it, but if I press play, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. Now, uh, just to let you know, I'm using the software Transcribe. That's what I'm playing this video and audio file in, and it's a great piece of software. There is a link below if you want to purchase a copy of it. It's $40, and uh, I get $10 when you buy it via that link. So another great way to support the channel. Um, if I bring up the effects thing, the thing with this particular track is it's quite noisy. I think my boiler's probably on in the background. So I have uh, just put uh, a little bit of EQ on the track. This doesn't get rid of the hum of the boiler, but it gets rid of a lot, uh, a lot of the fizziness. That's with the EQ active, and then bypassed. Still that whistling, ah, that I can't get rid of, but such is life. So a very useful tool. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna mark out the file. So that means I'm just gonna play along and I'm going to press the M key in order to mark out where the measures fall. So we'd have, uh, that'll be on beat one, right? So put a new measure there and we'll go one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. That's definitely where... That's the phrase. Yeah, so it's, yeah, it falls in time. It always just takes me off guard when I hear that bit. So rhythmically, yeah, relatively in time. I'll right click here and click Edit Marker. Subdivide the beats by four. And now it's really a case of just writing out what I'm playing. Now, uh, to make this easier on you guys, I am going to zoom in a bit, uh, which I do with that. Now I should be able to loop entire bars. Now, I always say this, I always stress this, let me open a new file. I always stress this, when I am transcribing, the most important thing that you have to get your head around is the rhythm. Rhythm is so, so important, otherwise you aren't really transcribing, you're just 
learning what the notes are, but you can't really write that down. It's super, super important that we have a very good grasp of where the notes fall. So, I mean, we can visually see, actually, you can see quite clearly the first chord is on beat one, the second chord stab is on the and of two, and the third chord stab is an anticipation of uh, bar two, it's on the and of four. So we'd have one, two, and three, four, and. Now, regardless of how much I push and pull, that's your concept. Da, ba, ba, da, ba, ba. So rhythmically, that would be if I, you know, if I just write it on a static note. Um, what am I doing? Put a little staccato on that. Now, because I have, uh, in typical Guitar Pro fashion, because I've messed around with my audio uh, before I recorded this, it's not actually tracking my audio in Guitar Pro, but I can fix that. That'll just take me a second. Some of the joys of Guitar Pro Service. So why I endorse Transcribe, the software, and I encourage you to go out and buy Transcribe. I don't necessarily encourage you to go out and buy Guitar Pro. It's the best option, but it's not a flawless option. There are definitely things that could be improved in Guitar Pro. That is, uh, yeah, no doubt. Also, let's draw attention to just how yellow this shirt is, right? I mean, it's a great shirt, a bit of the macho man on there, uh, but come on, does it need to be this yellow? <laughs> Probably not. I like it though. It's really taken a while to boot back up, isn't it? There we go, we're back. Professional. So, sorry, as I was saying, um, there we go. So if I was to just, just write out the rhythm, we would have this. Uh, that would be the rhythm for that bar. I'm not worrying so much about the the actual uh, notes, we'll deal with that in a second. If I just zoom in right in on that, we can see here's beat one, here's beat two, here's beat three, and here's beat four. One, two, and three, four, and. Bap, bap, bap. Rhythm reading like this, very important. I'm gonna do a follow-up video to this where I, I do one of my Reading 101 videos with this solo, so we'll learn to play it without listening to it. Anyway, now I can write the chords in. So it's a blues in B flat, so. Now if you want to be pedantic, you can do things like put a key signature in, put a control K, put it in B flat. Uh, dap, dap. And then I'm going to that E flat. Now what I wanted to do, uh, what I've encouraged people to do on my Patreon this month is to write the, the chords out, write the harmony out, especially when someone is soloing. The Josh Smith solo that we're going to look at in my live transcription stream this month is a killer solo. Like, it's an absolutely killer solo. Uh, and the thing that I like so much about it is he outlines some really nice changes and there's a very cool substitution in there. And it highlights this fact that you don't necessarily need someone to be playing chords to hear the chords, right? So, yeah, we, we can write the chords out. Let's do it. So this will be a B-flat 7. Um, oh, I'll put it in the next bar because that's where it should be. I'm anticipating so well. Let's hear that speed. So two beats of silence and then I break them up. Now, you know, the percussive elements, do I want to put those in? Because I, I sort of go... If you want to be picky about stuff like that, you know, I'm sort of doing this. And I'd probably put one before that. I know. But I would prefer not to put those in, to be honest, because I think it just adds a lot of ink to the page. And if you're looking to learn the solo, that's a byproduct of the muting, I think. So one, two, and three, four. So it's the same rhythm as here. One, two, and three, four. Let's put my E flat seven chord in there. Uh, back to B flat seven. So we've got a quick change of blues, right? 
chord one, chord four, back to chord one. So, but, but there's, this would be an F minor seven. So we go uh, F minor seven to B flat seven. Uh, let me zoom out so we can see everything. So that is short. Then I, I play that uh, B flat seven and I hold it. Uh, it would be here, wouldn't it? I don't quite hold it for a full beat there, but. So we want um, F minor seven, a B flat seven. That's a two five leading to. Again, breaking that up. This is cool, right? We uh, we then change our chord, and it, it, you go from the four chord, you move up a semitone, and play diminished if you're playing the blues, uh, which, as a full chord, would be oh not that that's a total mess. Would be that I'm just playing the bottom three notes of that. So, but the same principle, I hold hold the chord. How, hard, how long do I hold it for? Let's just go for the whole beat. Uh, so this would be E flat seven, and then we go uh, E diminished seven. Typical jazz blues. From here I would expect it to go back to the one chord and then down to the six. That's exactly what I do. I'm acting surprised, like obviously I know that's what I do because it's a jazz blues. And I'll approach from chromatically from above. Oh no, I play a D minor seven. That would that would make sense too. Um, uh, e flat minor seven. No, D minor seven. Yeah, because I'm going to G. This will make sense. This is, you know, it's what I would expect for something like this. Going to uh, C. So let's just put these chords in. So we're going back to B flat seven, uh, and then I'm putting a D minor. This is just like a, a two chord leading in. So I'm going to put it in brackets. Then we go into the six, which is G, and then the uh, the two of our original key, which would be C. So the same same basic rhythm that we had here. Of course, it's a different chord. I was just you know highlighting that. Uh, oh, shit! Where do I place that chord? Oh, I was looking at the wrong bar. So simple repeating rhythms, right? Uh, going to the F. This is like a. I guess I'm just vamping on the Charleston rhythm, which is that da, 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 da. Now let's see if this is anticipated. So I get a bit more of a lead into that so I can feel where that is in the bus. Yeah, those are all anticipated. So one. Yeah. Uh, 
C7. Should I hold that? And there's our basic uh, rhythm for the intro. So C7 here, F7, that's the, yeah. And then we've got a turnaround, which would be um, uh, B flat 7, G, oops, G7, C7, F7. Now, of course, you know, two ways that we could could write that out. We could put the chords where they come in, but I'm just thinking in terms of the actual bars. B, uh, bar one would be the one chord, then the four chord in bar two, back to the one chord, then we've got um, a two five, F minor, B flat, two five in the key of E flat. Moving to the E flat, which is the four chord in relation to our one. <laughs> Such complicated terminology, right? Uh, then moving up, playing diminished, back to the one chord, I go to the sixth chord, but I throw in a two to, you know, just prepare it, make it a little bit smoother, and then, um, yeah, uh, one six, C being the two, F being the five, and then one six two five again. So if we listen to that, let's get the right tempo in. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Let's just go one sixty. That should be fine if I give that a count in. I was going to say, so there you go, there's a masterclass in uh, comping over a jazz blues, but that's as simple as it gets, right? Now, uh, one of my patrons had already transcribed this, and his transcription was messy, to say the least. Stephen, he's a very good transcriber, actually, um, does very good work. He also does work very quickly. So this transcription challenge went up, and within two days, he'd submitted two transcriptions for me to look over. Uh, and yeah, because this one is unaccompanied, there's no backing to it. He had perceived where the beat was totally wrong and he was you know making putting formatas in like I was pushing and pulling with the tempo and it's just not the case this phrase is all on the beat one two three four one two three four so da 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 uh, I should tap twice da 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 now rhythmically I could write that right it would be um ba 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 so if I zoom in on that, rhythmically that's what we have. Da ba 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 da. So, you know, processing the rhythm so much more important than working out what the notes are. A monkey can work out the notes. So this is a blues in B flat. I know my playing well enough to know that I'll outline the chord very tightly. Da da. Whoops. Da da ba 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 da ba da da ba da 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 da. Let me play some super locker in. Ba dum ba da da. So if we look at that phrase rhythmically, this is a good representation of what you heard, right? Ba ba da 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 ba da 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 ba da ba 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 that results to the third of E flat. Slides onto that. Da 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 da
的。So I can put my chords in, got B flat seven, um, E flat seven. This is where this stuff comes in handy. Uh, B flat seven, B flat seven altered, E flat seven. And of course, if I wanted to analyze this, we could. You know, this is a B flat seven, so I play the third, third, fifth, third. Move to an E flat chord, I play the root, fifth, flat seven. Great notes to play on a chord. Moving back to my B flat, flat third approaching the third, third, fifth, sixth onto the root. And then we've got the super Locrian uh, phrase, which would be what? Uh, sharp nine, root, sharp five, uh, three, sharp nine, flat nine, root, flat seven. And that slides down a semitone when we resolve to the E flat chord. I can't go any further than that. I need to get a new page so you can see that. Resolving to the third of E flat, we play the third on E flat, then the root on E flat, and then the flat seven on E flat, and then we have this little uh, Charlie Parker esque rhythm that we play, which is just scale embellishment, which leads us into the diminished chord. Just playing the diminished scale there. So that's literally just the E flat, uh, sorry, E diminished scale there. E dim seven. We could go through and fix accidentals, but right now I just want to get this written. Now chord changes back to B flat. Da, 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 da. Da, da, da. Now we get this phrase. Now the gap can be off-putting here, but if we focus on where the melody comes in, we know this is on the beat. Ba, ba, da, da. Ba, da, da, da. So this isn't uh, three and four and one. No, that would rest, mess up with the swing feel. It's uh, and three and four and one and two and three and four and. So we're beginning on the and of two. Now I'm trying to think what's the chord? Uh, B flat seven here. So this would be going to a G seven. Ba -da. What would I do? Uh, whoops. B flat seven. Now what am I? What am I playing here? I mean that looks like I'm staying on the B flat. It's kind of. G minor, uh, G minor seven, yeah, G minor seven, yeah, it's like it's kind of like a G minor nine arpeggio. So I'm, I'm going to put G minor seven in there. Uh, where am I playing that? I really can't see where I'm playing. This doesn't make sense. That I played it and I can't see where the hell I'm doing that. sense to me now. Uh, oh dear. Uh, am 
the sliding both of us. Super locker in lick. I always call that the George Benson lick. George Benson played that type of thing all the time. Da da fifth of B flat. Da da da. I know I'll do that. Ba da ba da. Da 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 da. This is a mess, I'm not. This is what happens when you're transcribing at two in the morning. <laughs> doesn't that'd be right wouldn't it ah okay this is off now other way I can offset the uh, the frame See why I can't get this right, but stop looking at the video, Levi. Rely on your ears. final chords in so this would have been G minor 7 so this will be a sort of C7 I would imagine C7 and then we would go from C7 to F F7 uh, B flat 7 G7 C7 F7 you could analyze these lines in, in more detail, but for for now, this does the job. So we listen to the entire thing, and it should be right. to me and the other thing I like to do is add a second track uh, let's make this a jazz guitar and I will just copy that first 12 bars across now we'll be able to hear it with the rhythm guitar under it it's a bit uh, offensively loud does the trick um, so there you go guys there you have it that is a jazz blues transcription relatively easy to do uh, I took my time with it because you know I, I wanted to try and explain certain elements of it to you but yeah certainly something that you should be able to learn something from I hope you did enjoy that of course you know tune in at the end of the month we'll be doing some Kirk Fletcher and Josh Smith you will have a lot of fun with those because those guys are phenomenal players I'm just a player those guys world class <laughs> So finally, I should just say a huge thank you to these people over here. These are some of my supporters over on Patreon.com. Uh, they bring these videos to you. So thank you very much, guys, for your support. Um, this video is as much for you guys as it is for everyone else, of course. Uh, yeah, you guys rock. You rock my world, or jazz my world, or blues my world, depending on how you like to look at it. 
Uh, yeah, so thank you very much for checking this video out, guys. If you would like to check us out on Patreon, you can do so by clicking this button up here, subscribe by clicking this button down here, and you will see two more of my videos here and here. And if you have any questions whatsoever, guys, let me know in that comment section below. I'm always here, read every single comment, and I'm more than happy to respond to you if you need my help or assistance in any way. So much love, and I will see you for another video soon. Laters.